Welcome back to Drift Garage. We're making some good progress. But our project list is a bit ambitious, causing us to work super late nights, but you guys all know how that goes. Well, we got the engine back in, feeling pretty good about that, but we still have a lot to do. We have the radiator, the plumbing, and the tubing all to hook up still. Hopefully get this thing running pretty soon. Well, I finished all the power upgrades on the car, so I'm gonna move on to the suspension. I've been running basically stock angle in that thing for the past couple years, so I wanna move on to a better kit so I can back that thing into some corners maybe. And then the rear end's basically been falling apart, so I'm gonna upgrade that with some new suspension on it so I can get a good alignment on it. Well, all right, let's get back to work. Let's do it. So I'm just buttoning up the new WiseFab front angle kit for the S13. I made it to the BC Racing coilovers. This kit is pretty insane because it lets you drive absolutely backwards. It's one of the best kits on the market. The knuckle is all made of steel, but everything uh, is super strong and as light as it possibly can be without having to sacrifice the strength and durability. Running two turbos generates a lot of heat, and this radiator has more capacity and better flow than the stock unit. So just like Turk eyeing up my missile car, I got a little jealous when he built this amazing FRS street car, if you will. But, it's registered uh, yeah, and I, insured. I bet it is. And it can go on the street. Sure thing. <laughs> anyway, what I like most about it is that since it's a street car, it just has that nice, slick, really clean looking style. Me and my boy Dominic from Dominic Engineering spent countless hours, sleepless nights, trying to finish this build, getting this ready for the Turk series where he filmed two awesome videos this year. <laughs> Motor setup in this car is a 2JZ stroked with a Brian Crower kit, running mild boost about 15 psi in a Garrett GTX, making 500 at the wheels at the moment. As soon as we turn that boost up, it's gonna be making around 700. The benefit of adding adjustable rear suspension arms is so you can run the proper alignment settings that you want. After you lower your car, the factory arms don't allow you to really have the amount of adjustability that you need to run proper drifting or general alignment settings. So this is the tow arm and this is what changes the direction of the tire in and out on this plane. What I like to typically run is just a little bit of tow in, it helps with side bite as well as forward bite when you get on the gas in mid drift. Uh, this is the camber arm, this is what causes the wheel to run in and out this way on this plane. I usually like to run them no more than negative half a degree and that just gives you a nice even tire wear. The upper forward arm, that's hard to see from this angle right now, but this one is what adjusts the bump steer. Your suspension is all pushing and pulling in different ways. So what the forward arm does is tries to dial that in as much as possible so that you have the most minimal amount of bump steer in the suspension travel, which allows you to have a lot more consistent alignment settings when you're on the track. Pro tip, want to shed a couple pounds? 
get yourself a lightweight, high capacity battery. Before we hit the dyno, we got the top taken off so we can get some larger injectors in there, but also we need a fresh set of plugs to get a nice clean burn. Knocked a ton off the list today. Rear suspension's done, front suspension's done, the car's aligned. Sounds good, man. Well, I got the engine all buttoned up, intercooler's on, all the piping's fitted, radiator's in, exhaust is done. I think this thing's ready to fire up. Prove it, man. Oh, you don't believe me? I don't believe you. All right, as long as we hooked it up. Black to red, red to black, right? <laughs> oh! 